So far, you've identified a policy goal, right? A desired end state for the world, and you've identified a policy problem being a divergence between that desired end state and reality. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to try to identify ways to intervene to try to bring that that reality closer to our identified goal. So what we're going to do is we're going to build on what we've been doing for the last few weeks. So we're going to start to identify those different points for intervention, right? There are many, many options that we have to intervene. Um, and then once we do identify the points that make sense, uh, we'll try to figure out which interventions we can implement that'll get us closer to those goals. Um, so you should remember this, right? You should remember your problem map. Um, and what this does is it really allows us to identify a lot of the working, moving parts of a problem. Um, and it also helps us identify places and ways that we could intervene. So um, in the green boxes on this slide, you're looking at um, lots of potential policy options that could be implemented to impact one or more either contributing factors or outcomes to the policy problem. Um, and you'll notice right away, this is very confusing, right? There are arrows pointing every which way. Um, and this makes sense because a lot of the policy problems that we're dealing with are very complicated. And a lot of the solutions that we identify may actually help impact more than one moving part of our problem. So just as an example, if we were to try to uh, encourage renewables, uh, you know, for, for energy or for materials, um, we could make an impact on our reliance on fossil fuels, we could make an impact on our consumption habits, um, and we could make an impact on industry and shipping. Uh, if we wanted consumers to, to change their behaviors, right, we, uh, their consumption habits or the choices about personal transport, we might choose to implement an education or best practices campaign. Something like encouraging tech and innovation could have many impacts throughout this whole uh, map. So, so there are many, many options that we have to intervene. And so our, our first step is just going to be to do just this on your paper, right? So you've on your map, just identify all of the potential solutions, just brainstorm, there are no limits. Um, but eventually we're gonna have to narrow down. And there are some really uh, key questions to ask yourself as you're doing this. So first, um, you know, think about which intervention gets you closest to your goal. Um, and it's very likely that your, your goal is defined in such a way that there are many, um, and that's okay. You'll also need to decide whether you're going to work upstream or downstream. And uh, this is a, uh, an analogy that gets used in public health quite often. So uh, just bear with me for a second. So imagine that you are sitting near a waterfall. Um, you're at the, the top of a waterfall, uh, you know, sitting along the bank of a river, um, and you see a person coming down the river uh, heading toward the waterfall, they're, they're splashing, they're trying to get out, right? Um, and so you you rush in to help them, you grab them, you pull them out of the water, um, and you you bring them onto the banks of the shore, and, and, and they're okay. Um, and then a few minutes later, another person, right, heading toward the waterfall. So you run in, you grab them, you bring them out. So now you've got a few people on the banks of the shore with you, um, and, you know, more people are coming down, are coming down the stream, right? So, um, Eventually, maybe some help shows up to pull people out of the water. Um, and once you get to that point uh, and you've got a few people, maybe someone takes a walk upstream. And when they get up there, what they find is a bridge that looks like this, right? So there are, are the footing is bad, it's, it's rickety. Um, and this is the source of your problem. Um, and we have to decide, are we going to intervene at the point of the emergency? Or are we going to intervene uh, upstream at a point that can st help stop that problem from occurring? Um, and, and both have advantages and disadvantages. Um, the way that I tend to think about this is sometimes you have an emergency on your hands, you have to fix the problem there, right? You have to deal with the impact of your emergency. Um, you know, if there's a fire, you have to put out the fire. If there's a person careening toward a waterfall, you have to get them out of the water. That's your priority. Um, if you can manage that, if you've got enough resources to handle the emergency, 
then you have the ability to work upstream and maybe try to solve some of the problems that are contributing to that emergency. Uh, when we're dealing with environments where there are limited budgets and limited resources, oftentimes the best we can do is handle the emergency. We also have to be realistic. Um, you know, in the brainstorming that we do, we can be, you know, as, as pie in the sky as we want, you know, there are no bad ideas, but eventually we do have to become realistic. We have to become realistic about budgets, uh, about allocations, about uh, political feasibility um, and, and other concerns. Um, and we also need to be aware of the appropriate scope. Um, so if we're working for a city government, some of the things that we're talking about are gonna be outside the reach of our, of our ability. Um, you know, the, the city of Wilmington, just as an example, you know, probably isn't going to uh, lead the way in tech and innovation that's gonna stop climate change. Um, but there are parts of this issue that we can solve uh, within the city of Wilmington. Um, and you also want to be aware of your goals and your objectives, right? These should be at the center of what you're doing. Now, we haven't defined objectives yet, but we have defined goals. So remember, a goal is that desired end state you want to achieve for your for society, right, or for your, your locality. Um, and I haven't introduced this goal yet, but in, in our climate change example, I'm going to introduce the goal that Wilmington residents will be safe from climate change induced sea level rise. Um, so that is the desired end state that I'm trying to achieve. Uh, the objectives are the things that I need to do to achieve that, right? And there are a few potential objectives that I could uh, 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 deploy here in service of that goal, right? So objective one could be to control the flooding um, as it occurs. Um, and objective two could be uh, to provide relief if homes are lost due to flooding, right? So both of these um, would contribute to that, that, that goal, right? So um, we could choose to intervene at the point of controlling flooding. We could choose to intervene at the point of providing relief if homes are lost. And so what this looks like, if I go back to my, my map here, I could choose to implement wetland rehab to control the flooding, right? And that would impact that sea level rise uh, part of the, the diagram. Or if I wanted to intervene um, at the point where people could become displaced, uh, I could make an investment in the development of affordable housing because ultimately folks are gonna need a new place to stay. So for now, all I want you to do is do the brainstorming, right? Start coming up with those solutions, um, and then start thinking about the factors that are going to become important to narrow down. So try to remember uh, what is going to get you closer to your goal. Um, are you going to be working upstream or downstream? Uh, what solutions do you think are going to be realistic and which solutions are going to be most appropriate to the scope of your work?